want to clean it. It hurts the heart to, uh, to see uh, monuments like this in your in your country vandalized. Tonight at 9 on DC News Now, we'll show you the latest and how crews are working to clean up the damage by anti-war protesters in DC. The same shoplifters clearing the shelves at CVS stores, a key reason for shops closing up in the district. Now people are left scrambling to get their medications. Now they'll have to go to the next closest CVS, which is um, Georgia Avenue. What's being done to stop repeat offenders? Hi, my friends. Are you ready for some sunshine? Let's talk about it coming up. And the countdown is on for the Summer Olympics. How one Montgomery County school is supporting their three hometown heroes. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Susan Tran. Developing now the cleanup. It is going to take days. It, thousands of people, as you might remember, yesterday rallying across the D.C. area and the damaged property, spray painted monuments and lit American flags on fire. Yeah, that massive group protesting the visit of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the ongoing war in Gaza. Our Mario Carbone live tonight at Union Station where the majority of that damage is. And Marielle, I mean, we're looking at these images, very troubling, and the National Park Service says it's going to be days to fully clean this. Uh, yeah, Susan, that is because they say it'll take a few passes over the granite and marble to really get those items clean. You can see behind us, even with cleaning today, you can still see and Israel written on this monument. Now today people were coming out to look at this graffiti and process what happened. Meanwhile, some law enforcement agencies are saying that this damage is due to staff shortages yesterday. Thursday evening, three American flags fly high above Union Station. The flag itself is so beautiful. But just 24 hours before, an entirely different scene. As protesters pulled down the flags and set them on fire. It's not morally right. U.S. Army veteran uh, Brian Wolfinger to, says like, it's push, difficult to process. Uh, to burn that flag is to burn the thing that we hold dear to our heart, and that's the freedom to exercise all these rights that we have. Crews from the National Park Service spent the day cleaning up graffiti and vandalism left behind after demonstrators took over Columbus Circle, protesting the visit of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the U.S.'s financial support of the Israel-Hamas war. Just the way people were acting. It was Daniel Oribe says he was surprised to see how things turned out. It was just devastating, but I got to see people come here after it's cleaning up. And both citizens and federal leaders have criticized how U.S. Park Police handled the protest. The department's union blaming it on staffing shortages. In a statement, FOP Chair Kenneth Spencer says a small unit of 29 officers arrested 10 individuals while being assaulted by a mob of thousands. We simply do not have the staff or resources to accomplish a mass arrest operation. As the cleanup continues, Wolfinger is urging people to take a step back. At some point, you have to be able to say, I have to tone it down a little bit because violence is not necessary. And Park Police, they weren't alone out here yesterday for this protest. A spokesperson for the Metropolitan Police Department says their officers were working with Park Police and other agencies throughout the day, including here at Columbus Circle, uh, where they did make four arrests of protesters. Reporting live from Union Station, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. All right, former President Donald Trump posting on Truth Social about the protest, saying if those people rioting in Washington yesterday were Republicans, conservatives, they'd all be in jail right now facing 20, 10 to 20 years sentences under this crooked administration. Nothing will happen to them. Vice President Kamala Harris releasing a statement on the protest saying in part, I condemn the burning of the American flag. That flag is a symbol of our highest ideals as a nation and represents the promise of America. I support the right to peacefully protest, but let's be clear, anti-Semitism, hate and violence of any kind have no place in our nation. Well, another CVS shop in the district is officially closed tonight, and a representative of the company has a theory why. Repeat thieves. That's right. DC News and Now's Max Marcilla joining us live outside of this now closed store there in Northwest. And Max, we've seen a whole number of CVS's closed, but this one is leaving an especially big impact. So what are families telling you? 
Well, Susan and Chris, they're saying that it is a big deal. This is where a lot of people will come and get their medicine. Now, it is unclear to, to emphasize whether this CVS or any of the other ones that have closed in the recent years is because of thefts. We do know that thefts are at least a contributing factor, and we spoke with people here today who said that's not a surprise. It's a sign seen at 14 CVS stores across the district in the last three years. Our store has closed, this one on Kennedy Street Northwest. Let's grab a quick card and make my way home. That errand delayed by the closure, which Jackie Strange, who used to work here, says has a notable impact. It's definitely a letdown because we had a lot of senior residents that live in the community. Uh, and this was very convenient for them to come in and get their medication. CVS told DC News now these closures are part of a plan first rolled out in 2021 and are based on population shifts, consumer buying patterns, and the store's density. But in front of a judge, another explanation. A CVS rep spoke during a sentencing hearing for a man who repeatedly stole items from a Southeast CVS. And according to the U.S. Attorney's Office, they said thefts committed by repeat offenders have caused several stores within the district to close. This not only deprives community members of access to necessities like prescriptions, but it also deprives the hardworking staff members of their jobs as more and more CVS locations close. We do see the same people <laughs> come in and take stuff. Um, and then even if uh, they do get caught, we will see them the next day come in and take some more stuff. Daryl Kelly, who says theft is in his past, has a warning for these perpetrators. You get caught, caught one day like I got caught. With three or four years in jail, you're you going to learn the hard way. Now, you guys just heard from Jackie Strange. She's the one who used to work at this CVS, and she says she doesn't believe thefts are the only reason why this store closed. She actually said another reason could be that the Georgia Avenue CVS probably gets a little more foot traffic and some more customers than this one. But she does acknowledge, as you heard, that it is a problem. Meanwhile, we asked CVS if thefts are contributing to any of these CVS closures. They did not include that in the statement they sent us tonight. Reporting live in Northwest, Max Marcella, DC News Now. All right, let's get a first check on our forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. A live look on the left side of your screen there, National Cathedral. All quiet out there on this Thursday evening. Yeah, very peaceful, and I feel like I'm setting us up for a lovely start to the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb is here, and do we have to get past some showers before we get there, or are we co coasting along now? We are thumbs up. We are all good, folks, and now we are talking about sunny skies across the region. Excited because we just haven't seen a lot of sun this week, right? We have that stalled out front uh, and the front is crossing our region currently. So that blue thing that you see out towards where the banner radar that is going to slice across the region. It is providing us right now dry conditions, but really along a front. Typically you do see some spot showers. We saw that earlier and now they're dissipating in nature. Our friends in Ra uh, Richmond dealing with the bulk of this. Here is our recording station in Leesburg, the Sterling area, and sometimes that radar beam a allows us to see that green and usually you guys think that precip is involved with that green look right no that's the radar beam picking that up that uh, kind of rotation and so that's uh, just ground clutter we call so we're nice and dry at this point temperatures they're starting to go downward uh, we're back into the middle 70s in a lot of spots but really we're waiting for the front to cross us because we want dew points to go way down I want us to really take in this nice breathable air and that starts tomorrow morning under a good amount of sunshine with uh, partly cloudy skies by 9 a.m. We're into the middle 70s. It sets the stage folks for a just a wonderful looking weekend across the DMV. I have that full forecast. It's coming up. All right, we have an update now at nine. We've learned the name of the man who died in an overnight shooting in Southeast DC. He is 36 year old Calvin Moore. Moore died of being taken to the hospital. Now, police are still searching for the gunman. They say the shooting happened around 140 this morning on First Street. Anyone with information about this shooting is asked to call DC police. DC police have also identified the man killed in a triple shooting in Northwest last night. It happened just before 930 on O Street. Police say D'Angelo Jones died at the hospital. Now two other men were hurt and they're expected to be OK. No word right now on any suspects. All new tonight, a Maryland man sentenced to 27 years in prison for nearly killing his landlord. It stemmed from a dispute over rent more than four years ago in Silver Spring. 
31-year-old Jeffrey Gayton of Silver Spring will now spend nearly three decades in prison after being found guilty in April of attempted murder in the second degree. Investigators say Gayton beat his then 63-year-old landlord, hitting him several times with two solid wood table legs and stomping on his head after he fell to the ground. That attack happened in April of 2020 at a home on Hastings Drive in Silver Spring. The victim suffered multiple skull fractures and permanent traumatic brain injury. The conviction happened after the third jury trial in this case. Two previous trials ended with a hung jury. Gayton will have five years of supervised probation after his release. In Virginia, a judge has decided a man accused of plotting a mass shooting is fit to stand trial. Police arrested Ere Jiang last year for attempting to shoot congregants there at the Park Valley Church in Haymarket. His case was placed on hold as a judge ordered a competency hearing. Now, this is a federal case against Jiang as prosecutors believe he selected his vi victims because of their religious beliefs. His trial is now set for October 21st. And in Prince George's County, Maryland, a county council member, Calvin Hawkins, is hosting a peace walk and community cleanup. The walk comes after a deadly shooting that killed a teenager at the village of Town Square. That peace walk is scheduled for Saturday, August 10th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Are you excited? The opening ceremony for the Summer Games is tomorrow, kicking off some incredible events. And the district is making it easy for you to cheer on maybe gymnasts at 3.30 in the morning at your favorite local bar or restaurant. D.C. is set to release the whole list of businesses tomorrow where you can get a drink until 4 a.m. and a place to hang out all night long if you want. The approved bars and restaurants can keep those hours throughout the games. All right, well, get this. Not one, not two, but three swimmers from the same Montgomery County School are heading to the Olympics and today students celebrated the Stone Ridge School in Bethesda you can see here hosting a community wide pep rally ahead of tomorrow night's opening ceremony. Katie Ledecky, Phoebe Bacon and Aaron Jemmel all earned Paris to represent Team USA. All right, there was a dress code red, white and blue. Of course, Stone Ridge Athletic Director Andrew McGuire, who taught two of the athletes, says seeing the three swimmers on the global stage. Well, that is no surprise. Colleges have multiple swimmers on an Olympic team, but for a high school, um, all on the same team, all in the same sport. It's incredible and we feel proud and we're proud of them. And it's the pinnacle of their sport. Yeah, we cannot wait to cheer them on. Best of luck to those three swimmers. Opening ceremony, by the way, Summer Games is tomorrow night in Paris. Should be a lot of fun.